nope, you're not seeing things. We got dueling buck 119 specials in the house. Stay tuned for a good old fashioned knife review. Hi gang, Rob here. It is the evening of 22 September 2013. That's right, we've got a knife review and oh what a knife it is. I have had this Buck 119 special in my knife collection for I guess about 22 years. It's been my uh, staple camp knife for every one of those years. It has done everything from processing firewood to making tent stakes when one of my uh, aluminum ones is missing or one gets mangled. It, uh, it cuts meat. It chops up vegetables. It does everything around the camp you could want a six inch bladed fixed blade knife to do. And I've never reviewed it. Hmm. Never really thought to review it until the guy that works for me uh, brought this knife into work the other day and asked if I could sharpen it. And what is it? Well, it's another Buck 119. I thought, eh, since they were made about 15 years apart, I would get them out for you in front of the camera and talk about a little history this particular blade mine made in 1991 and we know 1991 is its date of manufacture because let's see if I can get this baby to focus because it's tang stamp after the model number is a little plus sign and by Buck Knives date code chart, you'll see that plus showing up right there by the year 1991. Todd's knife, not in a leather sheath, but in a ballistic nylon sheath with plastic insert, has a Tang stamped date code also. And it looks like a sideways T. So let's see if we can find that one. Well, yes, we can. There it is right there. 2006 production. <clears throat> so what happened in 15 years? Now we'll take a look at that as we roll along. I'm going to look closely at this newer production model for you as we review it. Let's see. What is it? Well, it is a six inch bladed fixed blade, fixed blade clip point hollow ground knife with a blood groove or fuller. Phenolic handle with aluminum finger guard and an aluminum pommel. It is, I guess, what you would call something. Well, it's kind of a mystery <coughs> what kind of tang this knife has. It's not a uh, by-the-book full tang knife because the tang does not extend to the outside of the handle at the spine and in the finger area. Uh, if we look closely at Todd's knife, though, at the pommel, you can see the rivet. Not so visible on my knife. I guess they finished them a little better back then. But the tang does extend at least to here in some configuration, probably a rat tail of some kind. So the handle does not end, 
you know, in the middle of the handle like some less expensive knives do. As I've said, the blade length is six inches, the handle four and a half for an overall length of ten and a half inches. Blade steel is Bucks vaunted and extremely well heat treated 420HC. Phenolic handle, that is sort of an old school, works just fine, hard plastic. The weight of the knife by itself, seven and a half ounces. With the sheath, if you're looking at the old school, very heavily made leather variety, the total package is 11.1 ounces. With this modern nylon plastic inserted sheath, 9.8 ounces. Guys, that's a pretty tidy little package for a lot of blade. And let's talk about the blade. Isn't it beautiful? It is a pretty deeply hollow ground blade. Fairly thin behind the edge. The stock looks to be, what do you think about? 3 sixteenths of an inch. A gorgeous swedge on that long clip point. The tip, let's take a look. Not overly delicate, but plenty fine to do fine work. This is Todd's knife, and I bet you can't tell, but it was tipped. Pretty significantly tipped. Uh, there was a square end about an eighth of an inch across. And if you'll notice, after having spent some time with Mr. Edge Pro, it looks beautiful. Tip looks better than factory. Gorgeous polished edge. And it is really sharp. <clears throat> that sharpness, and easy to get sharpness, by the way, comes courtesy of Bucks 420HC. You know, in how it performs and how it sharpens, it really behaves a lot like a rust-resistant 1095, believe it or not. Adequately tough, super easy to sharpen. You know, you knife sharpening guys out there, you'll know what I mean when I say it almost helps you put an edge on it. You don't really have to be on your A-game in this beautiful, gleaming razor sharp edge just sort of emerges from the steel it holds it adequately well <clears throat> super easy to touch up in the field uh, for a camp knife if you live in temperate sometimes damp conditions you just can't beat this thing uh, could you defend yourself with it in a pinch i think you probably could works well in all grips This handle, although very slippery, is so nicely contoured, nicely tapered. It just fits the hand like a glove. This finger guard keeps it from going forward on the blade. The, the little hook end pommel securely cradles your hand. The balance of the blade is absolute perfection. I guess that's why. They've made this knife virtually unchanged since 1955. Yeah. Almost 60 years of continuous production. Not always made out of 420HC. Don't know what the first ones were made out of, I would imagine. Carbon steel? Don't, I didn't really dig that deep into the history. But as of today, 420HC, and for more than 20 years. Let's talk about some very minor differences over these last 20 years of production. First, whoops, banged into my camera. Look at the blood groove. The 1991 knife on the left the 06 knife on the right. Can you see the difference? The blood groove on the older knife is in the forged stock. It's got sort of a 
rough finish inside it. The 06 model, milled. And frankly, not very well milled. By the way, these are U.S. produced blades. Let's see if we... Yeah, both of them tank stamped right now underneath the model number USA. Okay, the subtle differences we're talking about. Take a look at the Ricasso. The 91 knife on the left, there is sort of a curve there, but kind of short, not really room to put the finger for, uh, for doing fine work. And frankly, coming over that finger guard with the thumb isn't super comfortable either. But the 06 model, it's almost like they've got a forward finger choil. And you really can slip your finger in there, but I don't know if I would. Because if you look, they did a really nice job with that Ricasso giving you full access to the back of the cutting edge. I mean, a really nice job there. If you look at my 91, not so much. It sort of got that <clears throat> older buck plunge grind with the, uh, the base of the edge buried against the hilt like a 110. Can't really get to it. You end up with a little minor recurve back there. Don't really love it. <clears throat> Are these knives tough? <laughs> yeah, you can uh, you can ride them hard, put them away wet. If you look at this knife, it's been uh, this is not my knife. Don't know who did this to it, but if you look at the spine, this thing's been pounded through something with a hammer, <laughs> and I spent literally. Uh, half an hour at the sharpening bench with this knife, bringing it from pretty raggedy to extremely good sharpness without a whole lot of effort. I mean, it wasn't, wasn't bad at all. Broken tip and all. And then you got my old knife. Take a look at that finger guard. See how it's sort of bent forward at the top? I think that happened, you know, batoning through a log. I think I was halfway through it. I, frankly, I'm not quite sure how I did that. But it's, uh, the finger guard is in two pieces with a plastic spacer and you can see it's shoved forward and it doesn't really match up with itself anymore. And I, I've thought about fixing that over the years, but I really don't want to break it. I could just leave the bend in it, but maybe sand this off and even it up a little bit. Maybe I will someday. Doesn't matter. What can you buy one of these for? Well, did a little current research today. Uh, lots of eBay stores have these available anywhere between $45 and $75. I think Walmart sells them. In fact, these nylon sheath models, I think, are the Walmart package. What are they, $39.95 plus tax or something at Walmart? How do you beat that? Uh, the things last forever, and people keep buying them. Why wouldn't you? Man, that's sharp. Hey, let's take a look, by the way. This will be an interesting little comparison. Okay, here's my knife. 1991 model has been lovingly sharpened and maintained over the years by yours truly. Uh, this one has never seen an Edge Pro. This is uh, this edge is freehand and polished and stropped. I think uh, it's been touched up a couple times on the Sharp Maker since I reprofiled it. I don't know, ten years ago. And it gets stropped after use. There are no nicks in it, I don't think. Let's, let's run it over the thumbnail. Uh, not really. A couple little rough patches, but let me grab a page of the Natchez Shooters Supply Catalog. 
Let's see if it'll cut. This is flimsier than phone book paper. Let's see. Hard to do on camera, but let's see. Well, it's trying. Not exactly a super slick cutter, but you know, if, if I had some copier paper out here, it'd be ripping right through it. That's not bad for a freehand edge. That's that's as good as I can do, guys. Freehand with a you know stones and a strap. Now let's take a look at Todd's knife. Let's see if uh, let's see if the Edge Pro yielded any better results, shall we? Let's see. Yeah, there's a reason I got that thing, guys. Didn't just want to spend 200 bucks on a whim. Would you look at that? <laughs> Smoking! Oops, banged the camera. I was so excited. I just thought it would be kind of cool to take a look at these. They haven't changed a lot over the years, have they? A little bit of change in the uh, in the Ricasso area. A little bit of change in how they machine the fuller, or how they forge the blade, I guess. They have to machine the fuller now because they don't forge it in. But not much else has changed. I mean, when you've got something that will do everything you need it to in the woods at a campsite, uh, and it doesn't rust, and it holds an edge, and it's under 50 bucks. Why mess with it? You know, I am an I am a Buck fanboy, and I always pull for them, and I wish they'd make some more current products. But <clears throat> there are some things they just do well, and the 119 Special is one of those things. So, 58 years and counting. Good job. Buck. Hope you guys like seeing these guys in front of the camera. I thought it'd be fun to get them out. Hey, I hope you guys had a great Sunday. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And remember, the word is sharp.